What's up my essential yeah, it's Central Man here, so this is my review of NXT TakeOver in your house. Um I give WWE some props, you know, brought that nostalgic feeling on this show, you know, with the whole WWF um intro from the nineties instead of the NXT logo shape of the old WWF uh, logo from what was it ninety four up to ninety seven logo and also the old in your house uh set, the intro, Todd Pettingale, you know in the intro and then later on on the show he was selling merchandise uh William Regal doing uh, doing the parody of Lord Alfred Hayes you know selling ice cream bars uh the DX members you know Triple H Shawn Michaels Road Dog Jesse James staring at an old uh computer screen um bringing that 95 in the show you know like you know it looked like it's you know, they travel back to 1995, you know, I give WWE some props, you know, bring that, you know, bring that nostalgia into the show, because it's the first in your house show for nearly, well, decades, about, well, for about nearly two decades, it's, you know, it's really good, I give them props, and, you know, so the commentators for the show are Mauro Ronaldo, Tom Phillips, and Beth Phoenix, you had Orange, uh, was it Cold Orange did their music called, um, Underneath, it's basically the theme music for the show. So the first match to kick off, take over in your house. We've got a six women's tag team match. Um, Mia Yim taking Knox and Shotzi Blackheart taking on Candice Ray, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. A really good opener. Uh, one moment the match, you had basically had Candice LeRae hit, hit like a plancha. Tekken Knox did like a moonsault off the ring onto the other competitors. I'm guessing like uh, LeRae and Mia Yim had this type of feud. Like at the, the end of the match, you basically, uh, really in the last portion of the match, you basically had LeRae and Ma Mia Yim were fighting on the in your house set near the garage uh, portion of the set. Um, you had the Cold Kai accidentally, uh, I think he, she was going to hit. Uh, Blackheart or Knox, but instead um, hit uh, Raquel Gonzalez by mistake. Uh, Tekkenos hit a choke slam onto the Kai, then a sh then a shining wizard on Knox to win this match. Um, yeah, this was a good opener. Um, the next match we got Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. Another good. Uh, th this was a physical match between Balor and Priest. Like the the before the start of the match, uh, Balor hit like a drop kick. Onto Priest onto the corners, fighting outside of the ring. I think there was like one still step spot. Like I thought, like um, Priest gonna hit um, a Balor with a back breaker onto the still steps, but what he did, kind of thrown him onto the ring apron. Um, the still steps was used later on in the show. I'm not on the show, but later on in the match, I'm trying to say. Um, I think Priest hit the racer's edge onto Balor. Onto the ring apron outside the ring. He hit like a chug slam off the top rope in the ring on Balor. Um, was, yeah, this was really physical. Um, I think he was going for another racer's edge, but Balor counted it. Kind of pushed uh, basically Priest uh, off, the, off the ring and onto the still steps. Uh, in the end, uh, Balor hit not one but two coup de grace to win this match. Okay, and then we've got the match of the night. We've got the North American Championship match between Keith Lee versus Johnny Gagano. I feel like, like weeks before the show, you basically had um, uh, Gagano kind of injuring Keith Lee, like injuring his fingers, you know, like grab, you know, place like his hand near the still steps, kicked it. That caused like Keith Lee to injure his hand and also stabbed. Keith Lee in the eye with the car keys. I think they did that like an AEW reference because when Moxley stabbed Satana in the eye with the key with the car keys, uh, this you know before the start of the match, basically Gagano was wearing his um intro, basically his ring gear. It's the same same location he did his promos to build up to the, his match with Keith Lee on the show. And then by the time he oh he had this picture with Dark Hendricks on the wall. And then by the time he's open and closed the door. He's in Full Sales University. That was cool. Uh, yeah, this is match of the night. Really good. Um, one moment of the match, you had uh, Johnny Gagano trying to get out of the... Really trying to get back in. Unfortunately, he locked the door. And throughout the whole bulk of the match, uh, Gagano was working the hand and the eye of Keith Lee. You know, breaking it, trying to break his fingers, trying to, you know, pl multiple punches in Keith Lee's eye. Um, I feel like one more of the match, um, Keith Lee kind of uh, crashed Johnny Gagano into the pixie glass. 
Unfortunately, the pixie glass is not broke. He kind of like one of the one portion of the pixie glass kind of fall off, fall into the crowd. No, yeah, actually the crowd was actually it was behind closed doors because you know COVID nineteen. You know, mostly they're just wrestlers of NXT. You know, he kind of crashed through. You know, kind of crashed through into the pixie glass. Um, I think he, uh, you know, uh, Keith Lee kicked out of the one, was it, one final beat by a Gagano. Uh, before that, Gagano hit like a suicide dive and a tornado DDT onto Keith Lee. Um, you know, I think like Gagano countered the Big Bang uh, catastrophe uh, uh, Lee was about to perform, but yeah, Gagano counted into a roll up. And then you got like Candice LeRae show, showing up. Trying to like, try, he's trying to like, he's trying to like, yeah, it was a one-on-one -on -one face off between Candice LeRae and uh, Keith Lee, but it, unfortunately it was thwarted by Mia Yim. They brought, they were starting brawling. Um, in the end, um, uh, Keith Lee managed to hit the Big Bang catastrophe onto Johnny Gargano to win this match and retain the North American Championship. It was a yeah match of the night, very physical. You know, basically like uh, Keith Lee was selling his eye and fingers, you know. Anyway, so the next match we got a parking lot brawl for the NXT Championship. The longest reigning, really the longest reigning NXT champion, uh, Adam Cole, leader of the uh, Undisputed Era, Bay Bear, taking on Felford Team Dream. Yeah, this is not a good match in my opinion. He had some fun spots, but not the best. There's been a lot of good uh, parking lot brawls in, in the past, but this is not like the best one, you know. Um, basically, like uh, Adam Cole was dr driving like this monster truck with the um, the Honest Bit Era logo, and it says uh, the motto "Shot the System." Felfetine Dream was driving a yellow Lamborghini. He was dressed up like um, Negan from uh, was it uh, from Walking Dead. With the you know with the leather jacket and the ba with the baseball bat without the barbed wire on it, not the barbed wire, but the, with, with the nails on it. Um, in the end, you know this match was a bit boring, a bit boring sometimes. It was like yeah, like I say, it's not not a fun parking lot bro. I saw the last one I saw was John Cena JBL from Great American Bash in 08. but this was like eh, could be a lot better. Like you had some fun spot, one fun spot. In this match, you basically like, yeah, basically like, uh, yeah, yeah, Dream trying to chase Cole with the bat. Um, yeah, yeah, they were ch they're on fighting on top of the ladder. I think Dream kind of pushed Cole off really onto the the car, really on the front window of the car, and Cole's forearm was bleeding. He's in like forearm area was bleeding. Yeah, it was kind of like you know you had um, it was kind of they had the moment yeah, and that it was a bit yeah, the pace was a little bit a little bit off. That's just for me. That's for me. That um, and then you got the honest beauty, uh, two members of honest beauty era. That is uh, Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong trying to help Adam Cole throwing like these twenty piles of chairs in the ring. And then you got Dexter Luminous, the formerly uh, known as uh, Sam Shaw from TNA, showing up from under the ring, beating down uh, Fish and Strong, and basically place Sh uh, Strong and um, F Fish into the back of the boot of the car and drive off. It's like <laughs> it's really, I bet I'm, I'm doing the whole trying to uh, trying to kidnap both two members of the Undisputed Era. So I think like um, I'm guessing like Dream countered the um, was it the Panama Sun flip attempt by Adam Cole. I think he hit like a Dream uh, Dream Valley driver. Um, I felt like Dream would win it. Um, I think he hit like a Rainmaker onto uh, Cole. He, you know, Dream did some ta taunt, but instead uh, Cole low blows. Uh, felt it in Dream. Did the Power Now Sun Flip onto Dream onto the Powers of Chairs to win this match. And this was the end of... Really, this was the last chance for Felt to Dream. Had the shot at the NXT title while Alan Cole is the champion. I'd rather have Dream winning it, but just... You know, Cole winning it, I'll be okay, but I would rather have Dream winning it because I think he's been in the company. He's been in the company for three years now. Why I give him, I give him a, a shot now. You know, it's just I don't know why, but I'm, I'm, let's move on. Um, and then, um, and then it's um, I think it's oh yeah, Carrying Cross versus Tommaso Ciampa. This is uh, Carrying Cross, you know, the former Killer Cross first uh, NXT pay per view appearance or pay per view match. Um, yeah, it's Scarlet Bordeaux, you know, Velvet, uh, not Velvet Dreamers, Carrying Cross's uh, manager or valet. 
yeah, this match between Cross and uh, Tommaso Ciampa is a bit, actually it's one-sided, because for the whole bulk of the match, um, really Cross was basically, you know, dominate this match. Yeah, Ciampa had some moments, he hit the Willow, the Willow's belt, um, what's it called, um, I can't, what's it called, it's called I think it's called Follow Your Dreams, or, what, it's basically like doing a Death Valley Driver, but instead, uh, I think, uh, Cross County into a, the F5, referencing to Brock Lesnar, and then he hit, like, the, what's it called, the cross jacket onto Tommaso Ciampa, basically, it's a submission hold, instead of, like, Ciampa tapping out, he passed out, yep, uh, Karrion Cross won this match, I'm guessing this is his first match in NXT, it's good, yeah, it was a squash match, but, you know, it's just, like, you know, it's one-sided, why could it be like a 50-50? I understand they were built to make uh, Karrion Cross look dominate. Um, so, I'm guessing there's still continues a few between Cross and Ciampa. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, moving on to the main event. The main event, we've got a triple threat match for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, the champion, the women, not the women, uh, was it the Queen, Shark Flair, defending the belt against Rhea Ripley and Eero Shirai. Really fun, a really fun uh, main event between three women, between Charlotte, uh, Rhea, and Eri. Um, <laughs> like I felt like one moment of the match, um, you know, basically like, um, you know, like uh, Rhea was going for like a cr a dive onto Charlotte onto the you know, onto the off the ring apron, but you know, Charlotte kind of got out of the way, kind of throw uh, Rhea into the pixie glass. It was back, really back and forth. Really, really, it was Shark had dominated a bit, but you know, Eri was kind of the MVP of this match. Basically, she hit like the six one nine. Basically, a tribute to Rey Mysterio because Rey Mysterio is no longer with the company. I think Charlotte hit like a basically, basically a Walls of Jericho or basically a Lion Tamer onto um Eri Shirai. Then the figure eight. You know, they were fighting. Basically, like fighting in the in your house set. You basically had um, Charlotte throwing Eri into the windows, fighting the like the garage area, and then you got Eri Shirai climbing on the top of the door. Did a sp a splash on both Rhea and Charlotte. Um, I'm guessing like uh, Rhea locked in a Texas um, was it a Texas clover leaf onto Eri Shirai, and then you got Charlotte smacking both Rhea and Eri with the Kendall stick. In the end, um, Eroy, um, not Eroy, uh, Charlotte locked in the figure four leg lock onto Rhea Ripley. The same move that beat Rhea Ripley for the women's championship at WrestleMania. But yeah, yeah I think Eroy hit like a crossbody onto Charlotte to win this match and become the new women's champion. I think that's thank God, man. I think like when Charlotte won the belt at WrestleMania, for me that was disappointing. I was a bit pissed off because that basically they're just blowing the lines. I understand trying to give uh, Reigns for publicity from NXT, trying to get some like so knowledgeable, but at the same time, you know NXT they're still they're still not doing well in the Reigns. The you know AEW is still kicking WWE's ass in the Reigns, so I think this is the time for the change, you know. Uh, her room is like Shy is gonna face, gonna win a men's title, probably some doubt somewhere down the middle, probably in the future, probably at, at tw uh, next year at tw in 2021. You know, another topic for another time. So, okay, my final rating for NXT uh, NXT Takeover in your house. I'm gonna give it a. I don't give it an eight. I'll give it seven out of ten. I think it's just a decent show. Uh, not the best takeover show, but this was a good show. Um, I think like if you compare this show to you know Double or Nothing, I think Double or Nothing was way better than Take o Takeover in your house. So you know because it was better matches on the show. Yeah, yeah, the match of the night has to be the North American Championship match between Lee and Gagano. Yeah, the second best match of the night has to be the women's triple threat match. You know Charlotte, Rhea, Eero Shirai. Yeah, if Balor, Balor and Balor and Damian Priest. That was um these. That was a physical match. That was also good. And the opener was fun. The two matches are not that good. I think the um the parking lot brawl between Adam Cole and Velvet Dream for the NXT title. That was eh, not that good as well. Not that, that's for me. That's not that good. And then um yeah, and then uh, you know Karrion Cross visit Tommaso Ciampa. It was kind of one sided. So. 
Okay, that's my review of NXT TakeOver in your house. Hope you like it. Leave your thoughts, comments, section below. Smash the like button and subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. And this is the Central Man officially signing up. Check you later.